Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio with Ellen! Yeah, we did Woo! it! We did it! Great yes! success! I mean, if these episodes are out of order, then people will not understand why we're celebrating on this That's one. okay, we're, we're celebrating! <laughs> I hope in the next episode there's also celebrating too, we'll see. Yeah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> okay, well the secret to starting off an episode is, uh, is collaboration and uh, talking half time, which we, we have figured out. Yeah. Uh, but on this episode, we're also going to be talking about a different kind of secret which is the secret to building powerful decks on a budget. We're talking about specifically Commander because, yeah. I mean, I guess we could talk about Legacy or Modern. I mean, both of us are pros, right? And, like, have won multiple tournaments. Uh, yes, and uh, definitely uh, those things. I need to check my memory on that a little <laughs> bit, I think. Wait, but... no, no, no. You, you, we both won many tournaments, so uh, just, yeah. <laughs> don't 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 Google this. Uh, but yeah, so we're not going to do that, though. We're, we're going to talk about Commander today. So in the secret yeah. of building powerful Commander decks on a budget. Yeah. So one element that for those of you that might have seen some of the decks that I've built before, I am always a big fan of Synergy. Yes. And so, you know, and for those who maybe not most familiar, Synergy is defined by the interaction of two or more things that pro uh, that produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their parts. I like that definition. Yeah, it's lifted right off of Google. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Google. It's perfect. <laughs> the place where you could also look up if we won tournaments in Legacy, but don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So I've always been a player that really tries to delve into the synergies between different cards, um, playing decks that, you know, like Jun, for example, in Modern and everything where very you know individual cards are very powerful but maybe don't interact together in the most in the best ways mm -hmm. hasn't always been the most interesting way of building decks for me um so you know this is kind of where i landed as my you know favorite spot for my typical commander decks i'm with you say. and i feel like out of uh, our play group i'd say that when it comes to my build style it's probably most similar to yours as well because i definitely as well lean heavily into synergy and uh, sometimes too much so uh, as with some of the decks that I've had to take apart because of and that's something you can think about too is, is yeah. absurd amounts of synergy sometimes have a negative consequence of losing your friends uh, and making them sit and watch you for 40 minutes on one single turn well so. and speaking to that effect you know like eggs for example but you I put enjoy too many, you but put I too enjoy many watching eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you put too many eggs in one basket, then when you lose it, it becomes completely unplayable. Oh, so, 100%. you know, there's a balance point for there sure. Is. There. How many decks have you taken apart, like because they were too synergistic? You know, that's actually been happening more and more recently, mm -hmm. um, just because there are, and this is actually something we'll talk about today, is that there I skipped are that part of the notes. <laughs> certain elements of synergy that just don't really work all together, mm -hmm. or don't work as consistently as you would like them to in a hundred card singleton deck. But why, why can't things work consistently in hundred card singleton? Isn't Cause they this work like in legacy? our dreams. And our <laughs> <laughs> but then true. when we actually sit down and shuffle, uh, they don't work at all. Best laid plans. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. So, um, you know, and synergy is really only one element of, and one, you know, thing that I've particularly subscribed to as mm -hmm. far as, um, you know, building good budget decks, but, um, it does, you know, play a pretty big element of the 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 decks that seem to be successful at this level. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one great example that you know I always keep going back to, um, and it's just my favorite deck is just my cycling deck. I absolutely love your cycling yeah. deck, and, and when it comes to synergy, you don't know kind of the the depths of what you can do with cycling until you've played with played against or seen Alex deck because right. it is just absurd in the things that you think about to like do. I just I just it's absurd well and you know and it's 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 a lot about this like the commitment to the synergy as well mm. so my budget version of this deck has 58 cards that cycle Sheesh. so over half um and you're really hoping we get back to Amonkhet sometime soon for some more I cycling would love cards for that. <laughs> any more cycling i Wizards, will 100 there take. <laughs> actually well, it was odyssey or onslaught one of those had cycling as well i can't remember yeah which one. yeah there's been like three different sets get now, back to whatever those blocks are okay yeah. wizards go do that just yeah. so we get some more cycling in there please 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 yeah, i would love please. it it'd be amazing okay. especially more lands that like cost like have cycling two on them i'm sure you'd like yeah probably. you know yeah. yeah just just that specifically would that's be specific. amazing <laughs> cycling one even why not yeah oh even better even better okay. <laughs> even better <laughs> so you know 
for example, you know, your typical cy cycling card is mm. Rampaging Hippo, which is a six drop, four green, green, a five, six with trample. Mm. That's cycling two colorless, you know, so you discard it for two mana and you draw a card. Now, that is an individual card, not super great. It's not going to pair up well against anything else at a similar mana cost that you typically see at Commander. Um, so not a ton of impact on its own, but their interactions with other cards in the deck is what really makes them powerful. Um, you know, even just take a look at the commanders, for example, like Kaidel. Mm. Um, basically, when you look at like how cycling works, Kaidel basically filters colored mana into the same or less um, colors, uh, colorless mana, making the draw ca cost of those cycling effects lesser. Yep. Um, so let me just read from memory really quick because I can't yeah. find it in the list right now. Uh, Kaidel, I believe, is uh, tap for a colorless for each card you've drawn this turn. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Uh, four mana and Simic. Four mana and Simic. And who yep. cares? Two, the toughness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least it, it has one toughness at least. Okay. At the very least, it's one toughness, so it survives when it's in play. <laughs> yeah. So effectively, this allows you just to keep digging quickly through mm. your deck, finding the things that you need to hit for to like have a payoff or make the deck work. Um, but then also, uh, as your um, costs of cycling get get reduced through either new perspectives or fluctuator or other effects um it allows you to cheat out bigger spells um such as like the rise of the dark realms or um any big Gross. x spells that are like really uh, important for you to like win the game with mm -hmm. um so that you know that's part of the the balance point of like when your synergy kind of goes through the roof and you become really powerful absolutely um, Ravos, on the other hand, as the other commander, is not quite as important. Mm -hmm. um, but he, the effect is where it returns a creature card from your graveyard to your hand on each upkeep. And five mana in Orzhov, is that right? In Orzhov. Okay, so fine. in yeah. total, your four colors, everything but red. Exactly. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, you know, that effect repeatedly regains your cycling mm. creature spells from the graveyard just allows you to get more cycling done throughout the course of the game. Yeah, even just getting back a rampaging hippo allows you to get extra cycling. And again, if you have that flexure, right there's basically just a draw free card, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And that'll start to impact the other elements that we're going to be talking about here mm. in just a second, which, you know, starts with the support cards. Mm. Um, so ma the majority of EDH decks have support cards that basically support your overall strategy without actually necessarily contributing to it. So, and, you know, this is a common concept of, uh, of magic in general, but, like, take, for example, like, Crucible of Worlds sure. in a landfall deck. Mm. You know, it's not a land. It doesn't really do anything to get more lands out of your deck, but it allows you to reuse lands, so it provides that function of support for Three mana artifact. You may play lands out of your graveyard, essentially. Yep, yep, yep basically. Yep. Um, and so when you look at support cards, you gauge their effectiveness by how impactful for they are or in a lot of cases like how often they'll actually trigger you know crucible worlds is made better by fetch lands because it routinely gets lands into your graveyard that they, you can reuse again and again with the crucible effects yeah yep. so like a deck without any fetch lands is not going to be at all needing crucible worlds because there's no function for that card mm -hmm. so when we look at the cycling deck um you have cards like Astral Slide and Astral Drift, which are three mana enchantments that basically say like you blink a creature whenever you cycle a card. Mm -hmm. Well, when you've got 58 cards in the deck that cycle, this goes from like a kind of a weird or like ineffective combat trick to something that like will, you can happen turn after turn. You can basically like a stasis lock a particular creature mm -hmm. as long as you have cycling cards in your hand. Yep. It's also really effective at, at um, protecting your own creatures as well from uh, wrath effects or any targeted removal. Yeah, you need at least like three, four pieces of removal if you're going up against Alex deck once it's set up properly like that. Like it, yeah. it is so hard to get rid of the thing you want to get rid of because you can't. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then, you know, of course, you've got other cards like um, Herald of the Forgotten that act as like big payoffs for mm -hmm. your strategy. Now, you know, this, again, card isn't going to be super effective on its own without cycling cards, but since you have 58 cards that you're just going to be wanting to cycle as often as you mm -hmm. can anyway, this ends up being like a huge recursion spell that'll basically win you the game oftentimes if it resolves. And so even diving down a little bit deeper with the synergy component is like where we see these benefits continue to compound 
is where you where you have some overlap with general strategies of magic in general mm. um you know for example just like drawing cards that's like an element that everyone's everyone's doing it it's an important key pillar of magic mm. but you know cycling works really well with this because all the cycling cards draw you cards that means that you increase the effectiveness of certain cards that focus on drawing cards. Um, so for example, like Alenda and Azor, which is a more recent card that I've actually fallen in love with for cycling. So good, <laughs> you know, so and, like, good. An important note that this card doesn't cycle, but it's important enough that, and then like impactful enough that it deserves a spot in this deck. Out of, out of the 42. How much work it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So for those not familiar, it's a six uh, es uh, six mana Esper commander for six uh, that has flying in Ward 2. Whenever it attacks, you can pay uh, Esper X. And if you do, you draw X cards. So it does draw cards on its own, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, but the real important thing is like at the beginning of your end step, you may pay four life. If you do create a number of one, one black vampire knight creature tokens with lifelink equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. I like how they said like just four instead of being like equal to that amount. Like, right. you know, it's like, no, just four. Okay, cool. I'll make 20. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 So like, with a cycling deck that's going off, you can just mm. create a giant army. And even if it's just like a couple mm. each turn, it, it pays dividends. A hundred percent. And and again, with, with the pairing of that commander too, I mean, you can also just dump a ton of mana with Kaidal. You can just dump a ton of mana of that X too to draw sure. even more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another recent card, Starving Revenant from the Lost Caverns of, Caverns of Ixalan has mm -hmm. been a, become a key pillar in this deck too. Uh, and that's a four mana, four, four um, spirit horror that says whenever it enters the battlefield, surveil two. Then for each card you put on top of your library, you draw it and lose three life. Mm -hmm. So again, beneficial because it still draws cards. Um, but the real important ability here is the descend eight whenever you draw a card if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard target opponent loses one life and you gain one life um you know descend eight is easy to hit with this because again you're cycling a lot of permanent spell permanent cards so you've got a lot of them in your graveyard already um and then basically this means every time you draw a card or you cycle you drain somebody you drain one you know so like if you've gotten to the point where you've got you know you've used 18 cycling spells you can still cycle through and kill your opponent with <laughs> yeah with, with the other ones <laughs> with the other ones that's, uh -huh. fo that's 40 cards <laughs> uh -huh. oh look i draw another second one. Oh, second one okay oh i drew another one. Oh, okay yeah you're, yeah. you're just going down okay i'll <laughs> let you know when you stop going down right right yeah. so um you know really key elements that you know are fine on their own when mm. you just draw cards every turn but when you compare that with the abilities that you have throughout mo half of over half your deck that draw cards mm. it makes the synergy just that much more impactful and important and just makes the deck function in general 100 percent, 100 percent. i think you also have knowledge's power on there too yeah this Gross is a new card, new card. <laughs> now this actually didn't make it into the original list but something that i've been playing around with mm. and um you know the deck doesn't have a ton of like token generator or just like creatures that you plan on casting a lot sure. so this is one of those cards where it's like kind of like a maybe but mm -hmm. um i'm ex if it does kind of go the direction of where i'm creating more tokens you know lender lenda and azor become more of a key element of the strategy yep definitely oh 100 <laughs> percent just a straight up uh Goodness. you know um just a massive statewide benefit yeah for your massive pump effect for oh yeah and, and also again with the cycling deck too you usually can do that instant speed for for i mean most purposes when it comes to actually utilizing your mana properly with it yeah. and just be able to go oh okay yeah you didn't block with that okay cool i'll, I'll discard that discard that discard that yeah cycle through cycle through yeah. drop 10 cards and all of a sudden people are getting hit for a lot more than they expected yeah. but then a, bi a big way of you know diving into these synergy elements is also just like trying to get the most out of every different aspect of the mm. card so not only does cycling draw but it also discards mm. so you've got a cards like all seeing arbiter that can have a big effect this way where um and that that card has the ability of whenever you discard a card target creature your opponent can scrolls gets minus x minus zero until your next turn where x is the number of different mana values among cards in your graveyard mm. so um you know not the most impactful but it, you know as far as like you know blunting enemy attacks oh my gosh yeah you cycle a couple of cards and all of a sudden they're not doing anything. well and because like yeah you're cycling cards you're not a completely agnostic to like their cost essentially but again like you've got a you know rampaging hippo in there which you couldn't care less kind of how much that costs most of the time typically yeah. that like, costs six but that comes into a huge play was like okay i've got a six got a seven got an eight got a four got a two and, and i think there's other cards that work with that too with the different mana values but yeah this is a very good one where it's like oh yeah i just cycle one thing that gets my seven power. It's yeah. not going to do anything to me now. So, yeah. Yeah. 
So, I mean, like, this just makes, all these different elements make cycling cards just so much more impactful than you might look at. You mm. know, like, reading the card doesn't always explain the card when it comes to True. the, uh, you know, connection across your entire mm -hmm. deck, because your cycling cares about ways of recurring, mass, mm -hmm. you know, massacring creatures, massacring lands that you might have cycled. You draw, you discard, there's all a these lot, different... There's so many different aspects to it, and it's just yeah. kind of crazy, just kind of just unpeeling the onion, essentially. Yeah. That's definitely not a phrase, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but unpeeling the onion, yeah. 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 Know, yeah. Going through the different layers of the onion. Yeah. Ogres well, I mean, are like, like onions. When you, when you can establish that foundation to make the most out of these cards, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, these cards just become absolute powerhouses yep. that you know, all you had to do was pay two and discard it. Yep, 100%. And it replaces itself. Well, and you get that, and then you get this, and also, again, like, uh, again, with all CNR, there's also, you know, the Astral Drift kind of component, too, where you just start yep. blinking your own things as well. Like, just being able to kind of have synergies upon synergies upon synergies just make it so that you can have just absurd things that you can do with this and absurd value, absurd turns. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's crazy. It's, and I feel like uh, one thing that I like to mention when it comes to players ask, like, you know, how can I compete against my friends who are utilizing a much higher budget? And one of they'll start pointing out certain cards. Like, you know, I'd say like, oh, like Smothering Tithe, you know, Rhystic Study, that kind of stuff. And it's like, the way that I like to say that you can compete with that again is like, they might go for more efficient cards, but you need to focus on synergy. And if you focus on synergy, you can outpace them. Because again, like Rhystic Study is great, but again, like once you've got your value engine set up with this cycling deck, you can do more than what a Rhystic Study can do on its own. Yeah. Well, and also the fact that too, like Smothering Tithe, Rhystic Study, you put them in your, in your deck, great. But they're mm -hmm. one card. Yep. And, you know, there, you're going to have a lot of games where you're just simply not going to draw that more, particular More often card. than not. And oftentimes, you know, tutors are not budget friendly mm -hmm. either. Whereas this deck, you know, if you get going, you're oftentimes going to have drawn most of your deck. Mm -hmm. um, just simply by the fact that you're cycling every turn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ways to make f cycling free, all of a sudden you're churning through yes. your deck like 10, 20 cards at a time. Um, and so you can reach your impactful cards that much faster mm -hmm. in a deck that cares about you know cycling or drawing cards in this way too 100 percent. And, and there's also just a lot of repeat effects too like you've got how many yeah. cycling cards that have cycle two essentially right, right? Yeah. essentially if you get one fluctuator out there you're like okay i cycle all those for free yeah and that was why fluctuator was in this deck and the deck was specifically built around mm -hmm. the um cards that cycle for cycle like two. colorless mana yeah. instead of because there are plenty of um cycle cards that mm. cycle for like filter colors or one individual color and mm. those were not as important because in a four color deck it's harder to actually find those 100%. colors um but then also just made fluctuator that much better 100 percent. i feel like you and i both tend to like uh either things that reduce the cost of artifacts or reduce the cost of cycling down because it's just then free yeah <laughs> and they don't li limit those things but like but you have to at least pay one. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 We pay zero. We pay zero. We're not paying anything for any of this. Synergy wizard, <laughs> take us back to Amon Cat. <laughs> yes, please do. We would love it. <laughs> so I want to continue the synergy component discussion just a little bit further and talk about Noyandar. Yes. Oh my gosh. So for those again not familiar, Noyandar is a five mana Zorius commander, um, and has a very unique ability that mm. says whenever you cast an instant or a sorcery spell, you may pay put three plus one plus one counters on target land you control, and then if you do that, land becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. That is still a land. So, you know, again, this this was a commander that I had originally built at twenty five dollars for a for an event, and. Um, you know, really keyed into the fact that the synergy of this commander is built around the ability to utilize instant and sorcery, specifically draw spells. Mm -hmm. Not only to increase the number of um, triggers for Noyandar to build a board presence, but also just to, again, churn through the deck and just get through, um, get through the number of times that you could, like, create a, a game-winning creature. Um, and so we, we've talked before uh, on a couple of occasions of, you know, the breakdown of how you build your deck, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of times that you'll want a certain number of draw spells, a certain number of ramp spells, a certain number of, you know, creatures or ways to, like, build up a board state so that way you're protected and not just, like, randomly getting attacked to death mm -hmm. just because you have no blockers or defense or, or board state. Um, but... The synergy of this this particular deck is built around the fact that you can kind of get away with 
removing that element mm. completely. <laughs> because you make your own creatures. You make your own creatures, yeah. So, um, you know, again, leveraging the synerg- uh, the the core element of the deck, they're like every deck's going to, well, most decks are going to play decks. lands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there <laughs> and, are some decks that don't play lands. Yeah. Um, and, and by some, I mean like one. <laughs> <laughs> Goblin Char Belcher, looking at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but then... Um, you know, focusing on, you know, ways of drawing, you know, like they're, you're going to want to draw cards. Mm-hmm. Um, this deck really, uh, this commander really takes advantage of utilizing those effects to you know, not only draw a ton of cards to get mm. get to its end game, but also like per, uh, generate its own board state. In a 100%. Way that, um, well, and it's like, even if like, uh, again, I, the first time I played against your Noindar deck, again, I literally did not know what to expect. And I was just like, I, not that I, not that I didn't see it as a threat, but compared to the other commanders at the table, I was like, oh, okay, I can let that do whatever. Let, I'll be fine. Yeah. No, that was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, again, like the thing is like, if you have Noindar out and let's just say even just three mana available, I can't swing into you. Right. I can't yeah. swing into you because even I'm swinging with like a six, six, you're like, okay, cast opt, cast another one mana spell, cast another one spell. Okay. And I have a nine, nine land that blocks your creature and takes it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's 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 really impressive the functionality and the flexibility that this command mm. this deck has, and the fact that again a lot of these draw spells operate on instant speed, mm. so you know you do have that kind of like rattlesnake mentality of, you know, don't come at me or I'm gonna yeah. bite ya. you. Or get even like, <laughs> weird combat tricks in a way. Essentially, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, or even the fact that. Um, even if I don't choose the block, like say you're attacking me with like a death toucher mm-hmm. or whatever, like, okay, I'm not going to really necessarily put my land in front of that. Sure. But if you've presented yourself as a threat enough and you've tapped out, now I'm going to smack you with a land. Now I'm going <laughs> to smack you with a land on the next turn and on my next turn. So uh, that way, you know, like yeah. we equalize the damage. Teach you a little lesson. <laughs> yeah. 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 Keep, your, keep your little death toucher back next time for a block. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you, you spoke too about like there are uh, different ways of like doing, you know, kind of like combat tricks mm. or whatever. And obviously casting any spell helps mm. pump up the lands, but there's even like a couple of fun different ways of like making blockers when you didn't expect there to mm. be. Um, to arms is a really fun card in this oh deck. Oh my gosh, I love that card. <laughs> it's a finally two- got reprinted. Now fifteen cents. You spend like a buck fifty. <sighs> Let's finally go. made it <laughs> let's go let's go everyone's waiting for two arms yes <laughs> one of the very few magic cards that has an exclamation point in it <laughs> oh that's true yeah uh, yes when you, when you like actually say the card's name when you're casting you actually have to yell you were required to yell yes. no please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> two arms, two arms! <laughs> okay but you all right i'm gonna <laughs> cast counter spell <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <darn. laughs> but like you know th- this card was great because you know again it could um generate blockers out of nowhere by untapping your lands mm-hmm. but it also you know if you went wide enough with your noir and dar triggers on your lands you could all this could be like a weird like um like a ritual effect essentially yeah, yeah. you just untap a bunch of lands and yeah. then you can tap them again you got to be careful of that though because by turning your lands into creatures that are permanent creatures one wrath can really set you back <laughs> right right <laughs> depending on what lands you haven't played there's certain lands that can be uh, fun uh, dark steel citadel did make, did make it in the dark steel citadel is yeah so, that's you know, uh, indestructible lands are great yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then um you know to further emphasize the synergy of this particular deck um or this particular strategy mm-hmm. is that you could also leverage different spells that had multiple uses mm-hmm. so like flashback for example Think oh, yeah. twice was an amazing card in this deck because it replaced itself obviously but it had that flashback ability mm-hmm. and get that additional trigger off of noyandar mm-hmm. Rebound- typically <laughs> typically spending five mana to draw two cards is not great but again when it comes to decks like this where it's like oh i get this trigger i get that trigger you get, you get the extra benefits out of it and again your opponent has to respect that they see that in your graveyard and they know you have mana open they know that there's a potential consequence for doing something yeah well and like you said five mana for two cards not that great no five mana for two cards and a six six yeah fantastic yes absolutely (laughs) sign me up any day for that (laughs) and like there were even some better ways of doing it like with rebound effects that Mm -hmm. were really fun center soul was a cool card in this deck because Mm -hmm. um not only could it protect noyandar or your land creature if you needed to um by using that as a combat trick or um you know a way to protect those um from a spell the rebound ability allowed you to do it again on your upkeep. So not only did you get another trigger from Noyandar, but you could also target your giant land yep. and get in very effectively through blockers mm-hmm. by making a pro whatever color your blo- your opponent had blockers for. Mm-hmm. And two casts for the price of one again. So yeah, you're not had to spend that next turn. Yeah. But my favorite card that, you know, again, like you're talking about building budget decks, right? Yep. And so budget, budget decks have... 
um, you know, the opportunity to play cards that are a little bit more obscure. 100%. And cards that, like, wouldn't be great in pretty much any other deck. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why, the, you know, they're, they're glossed over. They're not really that looked for. Yeah. But for a deck like this, View from Above... Oh, I went to Vanished Memory, but yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that, we'll, we'll come back to that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just remember you always play that one. Okay, love. there we go. Yes, I love this one too. I was and, like, he's going to say, ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a two-mana instant that says target creature gains flying until end of turn. And that had functionality in the sure. deck because then you could, you know, make your giant flyer, mm. uh, giant creature, you know, with flying. So but would you basic. spend two mana for just that? No. No. no horrible. Never. Terrible. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> It would also say, if you control a white permanent, return view from above to its owner's hand. Yep. So this often meant as much two mana as I had mm. to spend, yep. I could just keep recasting this on the same land, mm. and Pretty I would get as big of a creature as I could spend mana into it. Absolutely. This turn after a, turn, even. A very strange, weird, potentially combo weak card. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. but never seeing play in any decks out there, uh, except for when it comes to actually generating absurd of synergy yeah. which you can with this yeah and yeah so not that i've seen and i really haven't seen this card outside of noyandar before but mm -hmm. um you know definitely an amazing card just like digging in again to that synergy component was just amazing 100 percent. there like this deck also had a few other different ways of capitalizing on the way that noyandar's ability worked mm -hmm. um so and like this is good advice for people that are looking again for more ways of generating synergy for your deck mm -hmm. um plus one plus one counters are a thing and yep. there's a lot of different cards out there that interact with or support the plus one plus one strategy and you might not think about that for like azorius but there right. even isn't azorius there's and some underused ones because of that right and I'm spe spe speaking specifically of the Outlast creatures from mm -hmm. uh, the Tarkir block. So Abzan Falconer, you know, just naturally allowed your creatures to have flying, mm -hmm. um, which was really great um, for Noyandar, just again, that additional evasion. But then even better, Abzan Battle Priest gave them all lifelink. Mm -hmm. So again, your, your lands are huge at this point. And so, but sometimes you wouldn't have a lot of them or the strategy commonly was like, you'd put all the plus one plus one counters on one land. So that way- a Hopefully an indestructible one as well. Didn't you destroy can. your yeah, entire yeah. land base. hundred <laughs> percent. But because of that, like sometimes you'd have to take incremental like attacks or mm. damage that, um, you know, your opponents could throw a bunch of creatures at mm. you. But when you gave that creature a lifelink, all of a sudden, like you could pad your life total oh, really comfortably. Yeah by attacking with this giant creature. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, cool elements to, to add into there. Mm. And then of course, we will get back to your vanish into memory. <laughs> I was really excited about that one. I was like, yeah, we go. oh yeah, I guess that's a really cool card too. <laughs> now I would say like this card has seen more play than perhaps view from above. That's true. In other, that's in other true. synergies, other strategies. Very true. Me. But the way that it's utilized in this is just special and amazing. Right, because you could target your land mm. with this effect. And because of Noyandar's ability, as long as the, the land that you targeted with, or the land creature, I should say, that mm. you targeted with this already had counters on it and was a creature, mm. you basically, this this card basically said, draw three or more cards. Yeah. Um, so you'd target your land with it, put the put, put the more counters on it, and then it would exile itself, and you would draw however big it was. Yep. Oftentimes, this was like a 20-card draw spell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then... Well, on the delayed trigger, it was, yeah, you're the, supposed the to land discard, return. right? There, there's, yeah. a, there's a there's a payment for this card you're drawing, right? Except that the card that returned at that point is just a land, so you don't <laughs> have to discard any of them. It's a magic trick. It's like, and this giant creature gone, poof, woo, land. Yeah, <laughs> David so, Lane. Like, <laughs> it was a great way to respond to like a removal spell that you mm. didn't have another counter or a way to protect yep. from. And you're like, oh, I guess I'll just draw 21 yeah. cards for four mana. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you're sacrificing your board presence. Then. Yep. But. But you would think that drawing 20 cards, and like when I played this deck, oftentimes mm. resolving this spell meant that you won the game. Oh, yeah. You just got so far ahead in the card 100%. advantage component. And again, instant speed. So again, literally before yeah. your turn, you can even set yourself up for that. Yeah. So amazing, amazing way, uh, you know, again, of building into synergies and mm. like finding different ways of approaching the game. So that way it allowed you to kind of like sneak that edge in. 100%. Right? You know, consistency, card draw, digging mm. for your deck. And just like a, a unique approaches that some, like you said, someone might not expect, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know may not be prepared for in a more standard, typical meta deck. One hundred percent, and that's I, I do like that you brought up, and that I think it's very important to kind of realize that not that if you have a higher budget deck that you can't find kind of like those little uh, hidden gem kind of cards essentially, but mm -hmm. like. If you are one of those players who might say like, okay, like, well, every single one of my blue decks has to have a verse six study. 
and this yeah. is a Zorius Texas guy. I'm so type two. Like, and you have those different cards that like take up guaranteed slots in every single deck, essentially. Not that saying that's a bad way to build a deck, but it's not the way I build it. But you might not find those hidden gems because you're not forced to search and dig and find like, those cards. Again, like that view from above, essentially. It's like, this card is useless in nearly every deck out there. And in this deck, it's like, oh my gosh. Yes. It's this amazing. repeat <laughs> absurd value, essentially, is all you want. Yeah. Yeah. So I absolutely love that. It's fantastic. Speaking of hidden gems, you know, wanting to step a little bit away from synergy as much as I hate to do so. <laughs> there are other ways of building budget budget decks. Very right? true. So, um, but you know, hidden gems is often an element that allows you to build a really strong deck on a budget. Yep. Right. So one particular example I have for this is my Saseya Orachi Ascendant. Gosh. Deck. <laughs> so this is a rather interesting card from mm. the Kamigawa original Kamigawa block. So it's a three mana commander that's a snake among but it's a flip card yep so the original side has an ability that says reveal your hand if you have seven or more land cards in your hand you can flip it and then the flip side is actually an enchantment that says whenever you uh, land you control is tapped for mana add one mana of that type of your man to your mana pool for each other land you control with that same you're reading name. that upside down yeah that was a little <laughs> bit more difficult than i was expecting I, clicked, well, <laughs> I was like i hope this rotate 180 button works <laughs> and of course i just hover over something else so it's gone there we go okay continue and so obviously when you have like say seven forests in play yep the amount of mana you can generate it's off of 49. is just absolutely <laughs> absurd but you have to get there yep and so you know, landfall st strategies are huge in Commander. I, oh, think yeah. it, I think it's like within the top three. I think it's top three or top five. It's at least top five. Yeah, top five for sure of like all Artifacts, Commander. life gain, maybe it's three. Maybe yeah, three. Maybe three. I think artifacts, life gain are top two. But just like top level, yes. you know, like Commander deck strategies yep. out there. Like Players it's like playing lands. Right. But a lot of that is focused on getting lands into play. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of cards that really care about you putting lands into your No, <laughs> and usually that's not a good strategy. <laughs> right, yeah, it's just like you I'd want like to flood myself. <laughs> <laughs> You want to put them in play. You don't You don't really want to just like sit there with like a script full of lands. Yeah, when you're actively choosing to miss a land drop, right. <laughs> you're like, pretty close. I guess you know, I'm not going to play a land this turn. All right, I'm good. Yeah. You don't have a land to play? No. no I, 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 sure, I don't have a land to play. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, pass. And so like that's part of the reason why it makes those cards central to landfall decks. Like take Scoot Swarm, for yep. example, or, you know, any of the Omnaths. Why they're generally so expensive is because they're you know there's a high demand for them mm. people want them people build them in the commander decks etc um but when you can focus on a particular strategy or a particular commander that cares about something that's a little bit more unique uh, sometimes those cards that allow you to get there are you know not really sought after so they're pretty 100%. inexpensive so for Sasea exam for uh, specifically you've got cards like travel traveler's amulet you know? i thought this was a 30 dollar card it's only two cents wow two cents! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, obviously, most commander decks are really not going to care about it. I mean, Wayfarer's no. Bobble is only one more mana to activate, and you get a land into play. But you have to tap it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to pay sacrifices somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but the important thing for, you know, this deck, obviously, is it gets another land into your hand. And it can sit there for however long you need to. Yep. To, you know, because sometimes with this deck, like, you'll just be, you'll be focused on getting your hand. But yep. Your hand is restricted most times to seven cards. And you don't want to just take deck, up all those slots. Even in this deck, you don't want all of your cards in hand to be lands. Yes, <laughs> until a certain crucial point. Until a certain point. Yes. And Traveler's Amit does a good job of just like sitting there and waiting to become mm -hmm. a land whenever you happen to need it for the flip ability for 100%. Our Miller here is another great example of this. You know, again, this one's four times as much as Traveler's Amit. Oh, so you got to really sell me on this one. Eight cents? Eight cents. <laughs> so. But, you know, again, this was a, you know, a commander precon staple for mm. several years at the beginning until mm. people were probably like, please stop reprinting this card. <laughs> Nobody is playing Wizards, give this. me actual <laughs> ramp. What are you <laughs> doing? Yeah. Thanks but, for the guild gates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, no, no one likes this card. <laughs> but again, you know, for this particular deck, really great. So, you know, we will take up all the copies of this that we, mm. we can get our hands on yep. for our eight cents. No problem. Mm. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, also with the with the particular end game strategy of this particular mm. card, um, or commander, I should say, yep. being, you know, all of a sudden you've got 49 mana off of seven lands. What are you going to do with that? 
it also kind of goes on the other end of things where only a specific kind of strategies are going to have car uh, like ways of utilizing mm. infinite mana and like certainly infinite is a great way of uh, or like a common way of winning via commander so this is mm. much more popular than um you know say like the traveler's amulet component sure but there's still more cards there that aren't really utilized across the bulk of what command what commander decks are utilizing. definitely not this one right so like weak root Ele- 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 elemental is a great example 13 cents yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know i think this is largely hamstrung by the fact that it's activated a cost is five green mana green 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 yeah yeah is that enough greens i th- Green green green, 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 green. Yeah, okay. I got, got it. Look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to check. They just shorthanded. We have to call a judge. They just shorthanded that on Emrakul, and it says six, and then a color symbol. It doesn't say like six. And that is symbols. confusing. They're yes. fi- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Figure wizards pick one or the other. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, it makes it easier to read, I guess. I yeah. Don't know. All right, continue. But like you know, this if you've watched our commanders uh, close quarters mm-hmm. um, vid- videos, you will see that you know went infinite with this yep. off of any of my forest lands because they uh, you know were able to tap for more mana mm-hmm. than what this activated cost yep. is um so you know a great way to finish off the game in this particular way but then also another card just like hydra broodmaster for yes. example um just mana dumps just yeah big mana dumps and again hydra broodmaster is i think 49 cents 45 cents. 45 cents it's gone down okay. recently so pick it up now yeah. reprinted a fair amount but you know also just like you just need so much mana to get the best use out of this card 100 or to make it like impactful enough to mm-hmm. make it into your 100 that um is just i don't think it's very sought after in a 100 percent. so you know there are ways of you know playing along with the strategy of finding cards that just aren't very often utilized 100%. and there aren't you know there isn't a whole lot of demand for them so they're cheaper 100 percent. well and with, and with this commander in particular too like because there is that demand to have so many lands in the deck and basic lands really benefit yeah. with this yeah. one you're already going to naturally like restrict your budget with that just by like oh, okay i buy my lands in bulk whatever it'll cost me you know 10 cents in total to get all those forests and yeah. so now <laughs> save so much on the other parts right well and like this kind of this kind of mindset is actually reminds me a lot of your Garth deck, mm-hmm. where you know you're 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 focused a lot on the auras that produce additional mana when tapped when attached to a land. Yep, and most of those are dirt cheap. <laughs> yeah, because again, like when people are looking for ramp, they're looking for mana rocks. Yep, they're looking for um, just like ways of putting more lands into play, mm-hmm. and so that means that your auras attached to lands are relegated to an element where they're just not very sought after by yep. many decks. One hundred percent. But that's all I want when I see a new yeah. one printed. I'm like, yes, please, yeah. thank you. I, here, <laughs> take my ten cents. I will take that card. <laughs> Yeah, it's yes. my deck. Thank you. <laughs> and it's just beca- that deck is just so powerful because you've honed in on that element of these are not very sought after, mm. but I can put a ton of them on one land and I can keep on tapping it, and mm. it just generates so much mana, so much value. Yeah, when you, when you see people just panicking over you casting a market festival, <laughs> you know you've made it. <laughs> oh no, that's too much value. <laughs> when someone's force of will to your market festival, yes. <laughs> you know <laughs> that you've done something amazing, and you need to take a picture of that. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I, I do think that you brought up a lot of amazing points about just like how... And the different ways you can kind of play with synergy. And again, that's kind of the main thing I, I tell people when when they're asking, like, you know, okay, like, how do I compete against my friends who are spending so much on their decks potentially or do this or do that? It's like, it always comes back for me to synergy. And again, maybe to a limit because at the upper threshold of synergy, you get broken nonsense yeah. that some playgroups don't exactly enjoy. I do love watching your eggs deck. It is, it is absolutely a masterpiece in how quickly you can make those decisions and uh, just literally how quickly you can run that thing because it is insane. It takes some practice. But, it takes, you know. yeah, it takes practice. <laughs> but, you know, and I, honestly, I would say too that like delving into synergy will often make you a better magic player too. Just 100%. because you become more used to making complex decisions yep. or navigating decision trees because your cards interact best together mm-hmm. that you'll understand the different interactions or relationships of cards with that, each other. Yep. That, um, you'll just kind of like start naturally thinking about magic in that different way instead of just you know focusing on like my okay my next card draw is yeah. this and i play this and yeah. it has I this play, one effect i play bomb card i play other bomb card i play other right. bomb card and none of them work well together at all right. it's just like separate different dispersed elements essentially versus things that interact yeah uh, and it, it um it allows you to kind of start expanding your mind per se on mm. 
the different ways that magic is played and honestly i've i've um, just had so, so much fun delving into that mm. <laughs> that um it uh, it's made magic that much more exciting and oh 100 percent. yeah yeah it's still different layers of it yeah fantastic well let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the synergy efficiency debate. Uh, what uh, What is your most synergistic deck? Do you build your decks with synergy? Are any of these commanders of interest to you? I highly recommend, I mean, all of them essentially, but yeah, that Noyandar really stands out as just one that's just like, my gosh, you don't know what you can do with that until you play it against one, essentially. Yeah. And actually, I wouldn't even bring up, I think, your, um, gosh, what are those... Um, What's the infect land? I mean, if you're oh. building, a, building a slightly <laughs> higher budget nexus. version deck, but yeah, this is the scariest thing ever when you see a blink <laughs> ink moth nexus coming at you from a that. 40 40 ink moth nexus. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, let us know in the comments where your thoughts are on that. Thanks again, Alec, for joining me on today's episode and for your insights. And of course, as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.